Hello everyone. Uh, now that we've finished mirrors, let's go on to lenses and let's start by looking at converging lenses. So what I have drawn right here will not make sense at first, but let's erase a little bit and see what we have. So a converging lens is a convex lens. So right now, this is what our lens looks like. Okay, and let's first start by thinking about this in terms of refraction. So let's say that um, this is going to be N2 for glass, and the value is 1.5. Okay, and surrounding it is air, so 1, 1. So if we start by sending a beam of light coming from air to the glass, we reach the normal, and when you go from less dense to more dense, it's going to refract towards towards the normal, like that, okay? And then we reach the glass to air interface, which also has a normal, and now it refracts away from the normal, because we're going from more dense in the glass to less dense outside in the air, okay? And this happens for all the rays going through the converging lens, and it's called converging because these rays will converge. So let's just keep drawing it towards the normal until we get there, and now it goes away from the normal, like that. And right where they converge, that is going to be the focal point, or the distance from the lens to there will be the focal length. Okay, and then this is happening for all parallel rays. They all converge at the focal length. Okay, so now that we've seen this in terms of refraction, let's look at um, some different scenarios. So, so I might not be able to draw this the best, but so we have our converging lens and on each side uh, there's going to be a focal point. Let's see. So they're equidistant if the lens is symmetrical, which it should be. <clears throat> and just like in mirrors, there's the radius of curvature, like that. <clears throat> so we have our focal lengths and our radius lengths. Let's say we put an object right here. So this is our object P. Um, to be able to draw this to find an image, we're going to use parallel rays and center rays. So a center ray is the one that goes through the center of the lens, and parallel will go along the principal axis, so parallel to it, right? And it will go through the focal point on the other side, like that. Okay? And again, let's draw a center ray, like that. And as you can see, these rays are diverging from another from one another. Right? They're never going to converge. But if we were to trace them backwards, they actually would converge. And this is where our image will form. Okay, so now this is Q. <clears throat> All right, and as we can see by tracing our rays, when P is less than F, our image is going to be upright. It will be enlarged and it will be virtual. So this is what's different from yours. Um, now that we're dealing with lenses, when the image is on the same side as the object, that means that it's virtual. So in this case, we have a virtual image. Okay, and now let's look at another example. 
let's try and draw this. Okay, so here's our center. Here are our two focal points. And our radiuses. Okay, and now let's place our object at a different position. So now let's place it at the focal length. Okay, and in that case, we can draw our parallel ray, which goes through F, and our center ray going through C. And as we can see here, these rays are parallel to one another. So that's important because, you know, even if we trace them backwards, this is going to be parallel with this, and they're never going to converge. And when rays don't converge, that means no image is formed. So when p equals f, uh, q does not exist. Okay. So let's keep going on. Um, here. Let's redraw this. Okay. So now, this is our center, again, one focal point, another one, okay, and now, let's place our object somewhere between uh, the radius and the focal point, so let's place it right here, <clears throat> okay, let's draw our parallel ray that will go through the focal point like that, and through the center okay like that okay so now this is i think this is our third scenario so let's, let's number these quick so for our third scenario we've got <clears throat> f being less than p uh, and P being less than R. Okay? So in this scenario, we can see that they will end up converging. And the important part is that it will end up being enlarged. So Q is inverted. <coughs> Now that it's on the other side of the lens, we can say that it's real, and it is also enlarged. Okay, now let's look at a fourth scenario, like this, and we're going to place our object at the radius now. Okay, so this might be a little difficult to draw. It's getting so far. But this is what we have going on. And yes, yeah, so this is exactly what's supposed to happen. So when we place our object at the radius, the image will form at the other radius okay and this is this is some good symmetry that we have here so for our fourth case p equals r and in that case our image is again <clears throat> going to be real because it's on the other side it's going to be inverted And it is going to be the same size. So this is the significant information right here. Also, when whenever an image is real, it will also be inverted. So that's just something to help you remember it. And lastly, if we place our object even further away, 
let's shorten it to be like this. So if we place our object outside of R, now we can still do the same thing, tracing it like this. Right, our image is going to converge somewhere even closer. So our fifth case is P is greater than R. It's even further away from the lens. And now our image is going to be inverted, real, and now reduced. Okay. So with this in mind, if our object, here we can actually go up to the first lens. If our object is very, very far away, <clears throat> think of it in terms of it being the sun. All the rays are going to be coming in parallel. So when an object is very far away from a lens, all the rays come in parallel and they will all converge at the focal point. So whenever you see, whenever you use a magnifying glass and you're using the sun, that focal point is like a little image of the sun. So that would be like the sixth scenario. Okay. And so now that we have this in mind, let's actually look at a problem. <clears throat> so if we have a converging lens of focal length 10 centimeters, so let's draw this. Let's try and draw it a little bit. Okay. So if this is our focal point, it's of 10 centimeters. It forms images of an object situated at various distances. Okay. So for part A, if the object is placed 30 centimeters from the lens, okay, so 10, let's see if our object is placed here. P. So if our object is 30 centimeters away from the lens, locate the image and state whether it's real or virtual and find its magnification. Okay, so let's start by doing this. So if the focal length is 10 centimeters, the radius will be 20, and we can see that our object is outside of the radius, it's past the radius. So, you know, if we were to just remember these things, we would tell already that uh, our image is going to be inverted, real, and reduced, but let's make sense of this mathematically. So we can do that through different, a couple of different equations. Um, one is the lens maker's equation, so 1 over f, 1 over the focal length, equals one over the object distance plus one over the image distance, Q. All right, and another is the equation for magnification, where M equals negative Q over P. Okay, so let's start with what we have. We have that F equals 10, <clears throat> and for part A, we have the uh, P equals 30. So the only thing that we don't know is Q in this equation. So let's, let's first solve for that. So 1 over Q equals 1 over F minus 1 over P. Okay, so in this case we're going to have to calculate what Q is by plugging in our values. So it's important to always flip this because we're not looking for 1 over Q, we're looking for Q. So Q equals 1 over 10 minus 1 over 30 and then inverted. So let's plug in this and see what we get. 1 divided by 10 minus 1 divided by 30 and then raise that to negative 1. So I get 15. Right, and these are in terms of centimeters, so I get positive 15. Okay, <clears throat> um, and next let's find the magnification. So we have m equals negative 15 divided by 30. 
Okay, so negative 15 divided by 30 is negative 0 0.5. So it's really important that we know how to interpret what magnification means. So when m is less than 1, we know it's reduced. Our image is going to be reduced. It's going to be smaller. If m is greater than 1, we know that our image is going to be bigger. It's going to be enlarged. <laughs> okay? And also, we know that a positive magnification means upright, and a negative magnification means inverted. Okay, so mathematically, what this is telling us is that we have an inverted, reduced image. So let's see if this makes sense from what we learned before. Right, so in this case, f is 10 centimeters, uh, the radius is 20 centimeters, and the object distance was outside of that. It was at 30 centimeters. So our object distance is greater than the radius, and what the magnification told us was that it was inverted and reduced. And like we said before, inverted basically means real. So we know the, the image is real as well. Okay, so let's look at part B of this. Repeat the problem when the object is at 10 centimeters, and again when the again when the object is five centimeters from the lens. Okay, so let's redraw what we had. All right. So now you know the focal length is still the 10 centimeters, but we're going to place the object there. Okay, so in this case, let's use our lens maker's equation. And let's solve for Q. So we can rearrange this to be Q equals uh, 1 over F minus 1 over P and inverted. So plugging in what we know. The focal length is 10 centimeters, and the object length or object distance is also 10 centimeters. So we get zero. Okay, and basically we can relate that back to what we learned earlier, where if you place the object at the focal length, uh, no image is formed. So that would be our answer for this part. Q is not formed. Okay, and let's look at our last example where we placed, um, let's see, where we placed the image at five centimeters. Okay, so now let's use our lens maker's equation. Right. So we want to solve for Q. So let's rearrange this. Q equals 1 over F minus 1 over P and take the inverse of it. So plugging in what we know, we have 1 tenth minus 1 fifth. And this, this makes sense mathematically because even though 10 is a bigger number, it's in the denominator, so it's actually a smaller number. So we get Q equals, let's see, 1 divided by 10 minus 1 divided by 5. Okay, so we get negative 0.1, and then don't forget to take the inverse of that. So now we get negative 10 centimeters. Okay. So if Q is negative, um, it will look like the example we had before, right here. And negative Q means that it's going to be on the same side as P. Okay. And let's also find the magnification for this. So M equals negative Q over P. 
So that's negative, negative 10, uh, divided by 5. Okay? So solving for the magnification, we get positive 2. Okay? So what did we say earlier? When m is greater than 1, we know that the image is going to be enlarged. And because it's positive 2, we know the image is going to be upright. So Q is enlarged, upright, and it's on the same side as uh, the object, so it's going to be virtual. All right, I think this is going to be a really important problem to know and understand. Um, so thank you for watching.